Hello everybody and welcome back to the Refresh Point. My name is Ben and as always I'm joined by my constant co-host Steve. Steve, how's it going? Good, but um now that competitive season is back upon us, um I'm gonna I'm gonna have to insist that we use my full title in introductions. In oh the okay, 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 okay. The current Weishwartz English world champion. Steve. Steve, how's it going? Good. I've had a nice week off. I did not play any in-person Weiss this week. I am feeling rejuvenated, and uh, I'm ready, man. Let's get it. Yeah, all right. Let's 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 get it going. The Sacramento Cash Tournament has now actually happened, with the regional being about a month away. Uh, there's a short time available for us to explore some ambitious deck building and shop challenges and wgb qualifiers are starting up for us to have our first taste of competitive play with some stakes so shovel your decks tap or cut and we'll get right into the refresh point with some breaking news da -da 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 -da. blue archive it's coming to English! Woo! Woo! Yeah, we get two sneak drops by the uh, by the folks at Bushi Road. We get uh, Blue Archive, which I'm sure there is some amount of players looking forward to. And yeah, you get like an early play combo and like double advantage combo, and then you get some okay finishing. So you have like uh, 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 an early game plusing combo, and then a level two plusing combo that gets really big on the board and like lets you hold onto the board really strongly with some good triggers, you know, like pants and choice. And then uh, you have like a fistful of off finishers or maybe even a one of tech of a, of a one copy of like a, another finishing uh, climax as well, because you're playing pants. Uh, and, and you you basically have like a level two advantage engine into an off fistful of off finishers, including uh, a, a next soul counter and uh, other defensive counters. Doesn't that sound like so much fun, Steve? Doesn't that sound like so much fun? As long as it isn't fucking hexproof, I'm fine with it. <laughs> 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 Blue Archive look at slimes like, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but don't make it look obvious. <laughs> so they left Shun out. <laughs> oh, They're and of course threes. the level zero stock swap. <laughs> They're all level threes. Yeah. yeah. And then you get to pay one, and then you pay one for the next one, and then the next one. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love big sets full of gotcha game characters that have five reasonable decks and none of them good. <laughs> this will be like the fourth or fifth time we've run this whole process through. So I'm down for Azer Lane Other. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Azer Lane Other. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, also, speaking of five reasonable decks, uh, but actually a few of them are good. Yeah. Uh, Quince. Yeah. Premium. It was inevitable. We're getting it's more It's coming quince. in January. Woo. Yay. So the second half of the competitive season, you get... Good Nino, sick Nino, actually, because 12 by isn't even restricted in English. So, so it's now a little restricted, just oh, not oh, oh significantly boy. restricted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, yeah. Like you know what they did? They looked at that next soul counter and they threw it in the garbage bin. If they could run that next soul counter, they would. I assure the, yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Instead, they're running the fucking in, in like the JP list. Even like they're gonna run like the heal two counter and like the the burn two counter and. They're gonna have a grand old time with foolish burial and all the same checking, but now you almost guaranteed have a waiting room that you want. The upside is for everybody that was wondering if Cart Titan was back on the menu, just 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 hold your horses, okay? Cart Titan. By January, Cart Titan, Watame, and every other way that you could shut down your opponent's oppressive board state, those are all coming back on the menu. Hall Live will never eat like they've eaten when it once this set becomes legal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, true, is there true. plenty of guys to downgrade? Sick. Oh, is there plenty of guys to delete? Sick. I've got all those. <laughs> so, Sick. yeah, um, we're going to end up with probably at least two very reasonable quintuplets decks that will be high tier meta decks. And then we'll probably end up with two more pretty good near meta annoying decks for sure. Right, right. Miku and Yotsuba. Yes. I think 
I mean, I, I mean, like Ichika is like still the same too. Honestly, all that like no, Ichika, Ichika and Nino are the two biggest beneficiaries yeah, yeah, yeah. from the premium set. The problem is Itsuki doesn't get anything. That, that's I guess that's true. Like, but but it's still Itsuki. Like literally nothing. Okay, but it's still Itsuki though. Yeah, it's, so it still exists. So really, all that happened was that Miku and Yutsuba became not com like dog. Like they went from like argue like because like they didn't. They didn't get anything before. I think this. Ichika or, Yotsuba, I guess, kind of like. No, not, not, not really. I'm not gonna make that argument. Yotsuba's fine. Um, Yotsuba's fine, but like Yotsuba and Miku get to like arguably B tier, and like Ichika and Ninu get up more, and then Itsuki stays exactly the same. Yeah, Itsuki not getting anything kind of sucks. Ichika basically becomes a 12 choice deck, which is really important because that deck was desperately hungry for any resources it could get and now it's gonna get some yeah um i don't know that i would want to pilot it at a big event but it seems a lot more risk risky than playing nino nino is just gonna be good yeah that's true. all there is to it true uh go to your local shop challenge today it's time! Yeah, it's time to get your free uh, scam wins by pummeling your locals for value. Yeah. Also, if you haven't already, go to your WGB qualifier for qualifying to the the Hot C WGP Nationals. Woo! Yeah, so you can go to your local WGP event, do well i sometimes it's not not even one you just like top two I, I think it's literally top two for most of the smaller ones yeah houston for example is top four yeah but that's happening tomorrow so congratulations to the four people that have already gotten their wgp invites from houston Yay. hopefully that includes like two or three dallas people yeah that would be great yeah yeah that'd be stealing awesome stealing their invites is what we like to do most honestly yeah given our track re record recently we, we we steal invites all the time so uh yeah you do reasonably well then you can pay 500 dollars to go to new york in the middle of nowhere you shut up right now and i then, don't need to think and, about it you <laughs> shut up right now <laughs> and then you can try really hard and if you do well there then they'll sling you some bread to to send you to japan which i'll we'll clarify from the last episode we did rectify in the comments but um given that there are statistically there are only approximately 50 real ones out there uh, to all you 50 real ones, you know that we we messed up. Uh, you can go to both JP Worlds and English Worlds this year. Yeah, they're it's far actually enough. like extremely far away. Like yeah. JP Worlds they're is three, in January. They're like three months apart. They're like four months apart. It's like English Worlds is in like May. Yeah, JP Worlds is in January. Yeah, it is in like three months. Or I can't do math. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's in a long, uh, pretty short time. Like uh, yeah, four months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh in any case uh, yes yeah. if you have ambitions to be the wgp champ you still can so you could be both you could be both you could be both it would be hard be that guy i'm gonna try at least one wgp qualifier so we'll but see. you're not gonna go to rochester are you if i get in the top two then yeah Oh! Yeah, Ben. <laughs> oh! Get a load of this fucking guy. Okay. Changing, changing the tune a little bit. Okay. All right. We could split the room costs a little bit because if you don't make it in any of the WGP qualifiers, there's the WGP last chance qualifier the day before. Yeah. And it has like 16 invite spots in it. Good Lord. So if That's you... crazy. If you get top half of that event... <laughs> You'll just get, make it to nuts anyway, so let's go. I don't know that I would pay without having the the, the qualifier, knowledge. the qualifier already in hand because that that sounds like a cursed move, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how many WGPs end up being around me. There's One. A, uh, I thought some. Nope. One. None of the ones in DFW. Card Haven. I thought didn't Oklahoma get one? I don't know. I, anyway, I, I don't. I don't know, dude. I mean, we, we can keep talking while I, thought I look, there was, but... I thought there were more than one close by. Uh... <laughs> Is Houston the other one? Uh, yeah. It's Houston. <laughs> it, yeah, it's tomorrow, dude. It's, well, it I already, can't go to that one. It so. already happened. Yep. So, yeah. Card Haven and... Oh, there's one in Dragon's Lair. That's right. That's what and I was Austin. thinking. And Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we could steal it from Austin conceivably. 
technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew there were. T- I did knew there were two. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. awesome one was the one I was thinking of. I didn't even realize Gardaven had one. That's kind of sick. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we will do our level best to try and do okay there. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna go to Rochester no matter what. And if I don't get the invite beforehand and I whiff the last chance, it wasn't meant to be. All good. No yeah, worries. Yeah, pretty much. You we can just, visit. We yeah, just you... tried to have. We just tried to. Have, we just tried, and it was fun, and that was okay. You yeah. know. Have some pizza and go see Hammer Girl Anime. Uh, well, I don't know about the pizza part. It's in Rochester, dude. That's fucking like fuck off nowhere, dude. I looked up the the train from like Rochester to like anywhere near New York is seven hours, dude. Wow. I thought they, they have high-speed rail up there, but not to Rochester, I guess. Uh, or I just didn't find it. Maybe it does exist. It wasn't on Google Maps. I do have some friends in the upstate New York area. I don't know that area super well, but yeah, maybe. Fucking maybe. Holy shit, dude. It's it's so... Man, I, I looked at the flights. It's fucking cringe. If I want to save any amount of money, it's going to be fucking 12-hour travel days. <laughs> it's fucking I'm absolutely cursed. not doing that. Yeah, you have a little bit more money to work with. All good. No Probably worries. Probably true, yeah. So, yeah. Um, little cringe. Fucking Rochester. I, I, it would be nice to go to Hammer Girl, though. They have some uh, Mahiru deck boxes. A deck box and some sleeves. Never mind. I, the, it, I, I have no idea what New York looks like. Oh, well, nice job. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Where do your friends live? Albany. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's that's not how that works. Yeah. That's that's not how geography works. That's pretty far. That's Yeah, that's just not how that works at all. I guess if, like, Buffalo is sort of close. It, does, does Rochester have an airport? It, it actually is where the airport is, yeah. I bet Buffalo has an airport. No, I tried. Or it it does, but uh, at least (laughs) from Spirit, it doesn't have a flight. Oh, okay. That's a pretty far drive, too. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll fly to Buffalo, probably. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Assuming it's not like a gajillion dollars. I don't know. Yeah, we'll I also see. have to do well first, so yeah, let's, yeah. Let's you do also that. have to. Let's you... get that out of the way first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you gonna build the uh, the Alice deck? No comment. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I will say, apropos of nothing, that the cards for that deck are kind of randomly hard to source. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apropos of nothing, for yeah, yeah. for for some reason, like everybody bought all the Mother's Rosario on the Earth uh, <laughs> like, from every set that they were legal. <laughs> I was kind of mad about it. <laughs> all right, yeah, fair enough. Um, my guess was the correct guess, and some other people's. The the like 75% loading thing that teaser that they did was just a website redesign. Yeah, it it's it looks okay. It looks fine. Fine. Yeah. Better than before like visually, but uh, I did get I don't I don't really go to the White Shorts website that often, so but I did see some feedback on Twitter from people who were interested in that that it it there was some room for improvement there. No, so. dude, I I I used to work directly with web development. Yeah, it, it was a little painful sometimes, but you know, uh, Bushiro didn't hire me, so it's it's all good. It's no worries. So, do you think it's you think it's good or, or it's, it's you know somebody did make this website. Okay. No, no further comment. <laughs> the band list was like outdated for like a whole week. It was Oof. pretty funny. <laughs> it wasn't that good before. Uh, Is it yeah. better? It looks a little nicer. Okay. Well, on average. So yeah. we're just going to Kaizen it. Like, we, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, there's a scrum team working on that right now. We'll just keep iterating. It's, <laughs> it's probably There's fun. a scrum team with stories right... They've got defects right now that they're working on. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with it. Like... I, if there's a team. Maybe I'm overestimating... The, there's they're, a they're contractor, hiring. probably. There, but. There's, there's one guy, maybe, that... And, I don't know. And he has a board that he's working off of, maybe. But in any case, um, <laughs> no big changes to the game, which I'm kind of happy with. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was a little spooked by when they did, when they announced it. I was like, what are they going to change the... Are we going to get a visual like layout update? Are we changing like the way the cards look? Or No, 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 no. no. I, yeah, I'd yeah. have been okay with it if, if, they, if it had been done well, but... Um, well, actually, I was also wondering if they would announce a second format. Oh, really? Like, uh, like, you know, like a legacy format of some kind. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. 
like an actually officially defined legacy format with its own competitive circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be cool. Impossible to play in, like for any new players, <laughs> but it would be cool. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like strictly impossible to get into, like nearly at all, but it would be cool. Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd have to reprint some stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They've shown some willingness in that area. Yeah, they reprinted. Konosuba for some reason, we're movie. getting yeah, we're getting a Konosuba two reprint for all the people that <laughs> not asked. two, right? It's it's the movie. I don't. There was Konosuba, then two, then movie, if I recall correctly. I don't think there's three sets, but I don't remember. Oh no, there was a re-edit. That, yeah, that's right. There's a re-edit with both sets. N I thought there were three sets. I I'm, don't know. Maybe I'm trolling. All I, right, all good. No worries. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, what the fuck, Steve? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You'll explain yourself and you'll explain yourself right now, young man. <laughs> so, obviously, uh, Sacramento didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> I will say I knew that the day was going to be difficult after the first couple games because in the first game I had my opponent at 3-6 after stock swapping him and landing a full ass Gura and then I sided for precise lethal triggered and then he blocked on two and I was like yep that's the way today is gonna be it looks like <laughs> and of course it's against fucking slime and yeah, so yeah, yeah. Nice. I lose and nice. then my next round, I face a guy. He's at 3-6. I have 20 triggers in a 29-card deck. And uh, my previous attack wasn't a trigger, so I sided for lethal, and then it wasn't a trigger either. And so uh, it hit for zero, and I died. And I was like, <laughs> promptly 0-2 instead of 2-0. And, and I was like, all right, well, it's, we're just going to have a good time. And so four people uh, throttled me for money. Um, <laughs> they not only got the promo, but they got $20 from the store. Uh, so congratulations to those four people. You're better than the world champion, apparently. One for zero. Retire. Never face me again. <laughs> but... But I had a great time. Um, a bunch of people. Uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, yeah, for a sure. A lot of people showed up, and the Northern California guys were extremely accommodating um, and kind, and I, I had a really good time. Congratulations to Steven <laughs> Hendrickson Tran. Yeah. He changed his middle name on Facebook <laughs> afterwards. Brother. <laughs> he went with Seven Deadly Sins, a known favorite deck in the California region. Yeah. Uh, I went back and listened to the, our previous episode in preparation for this episode because um, I tried to re I couldn't exactly remember what what my time traveler self said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it. It would be difficult to be more wrong. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way, but not not many. It's like one of those Doctor Strange universe things where it's like, how many universes were I actually right? Just one. And it's like all the other ones just wrong as fuck. So everything I said that was gonna happen in that tournament didn't happen. Everything nice. I thought would awesome. be there wasn't there. Sick. Like awesome. there were two Overlord decks and they faced each other in round one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Chain Fire. Appreciate the comment. Yeah. Um, and also the, the the combination and helping run the tournament. Yeah, and he, and making the promo cards like Chain Fire. That's our boy. He's the goat. So, um, all the <laughs> yeah, all those all the Bay Area guys um, that we went out with afterward. Um, you know, uh, Jonathan, Steven, Kenny, Kaz, and I'm sure many others that I can't remember. You guys were all solid. I had a great time. Um, but yeah, uh, very close to being four and two, but pretty much two and four. So, <laughs> um, there nice. was another Steven there that is not the winner and is also not me, uh, that, uh, also played Kelly Gura. He's a listener of the podcast 
And so we were kind of kibitzing afterward about how w w the nature of the deck and, and how it behaves. He went four and two. Oh, okay. Got and it. Got so it. Got it. And so I was like, it. yeah. Yeah, it could have been you, but wasn't at you. At best, at best, four and two. The other two losses, I got absolutely throttled. It was one of them was like a classic slime beatdown where it was just like, I'm a full level and a half behind, and there's just no world in which I'd ever win. Nice. So nice. Sick, I think sick. he like Miron comboed like three turns in a row. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing three here. Three turns! Like, he. See, what the fuck were you doing? He literally. Just passing? He literally never took damage. I didn't take damage for a while, and he's just bleeding my hand completely to death. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, but uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, which what slime variant? It was uh it was standby and um and it was max rarity and it was just it was really nice to look at. <laughs> As, as it's canceling I was just, on getting, you I was just getting, as I'm over. getting throttled just throttled I was like brother I don't know what to do here I'm getting destroyed so yeah I had a, oh, I had a very good time uh, we played some friendlies okay. afterward and screwed around a bit and then when got Chinese it was good it was yeah great. good stuff yeah, yeah. I, I love Northern like, California apparently the player base is extremely dangerous I shouldn't go there but I'm glad I'm not going you, to your regional. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, we all knew this, man. Come on. Like, <laughs> I know, but, you know, trust but verify, right? Yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> next uh, time. Next. I'll oh, do, yeah. I'll uh, do better next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had our, yeah, we had our recording delayed a little bit, and so uh, we we get to far more content for a second. Strictly Broken made a tier list. Uh, Prince, Jason... Uh, wow, I super blanked the other person. Carmen was there. The person, yeah, Carmen was there. I can't believe I completely blanked the third person that was in that call. Uh, <laughs> that's a little bit of a gaffe. I looked this up literally like 10 minutes before leaving to drive here. And now I have no idea what I'm talking about. Awesome. But they made a tier list. I didn't watch the video. I did read their notes afterward to Same. see what they said. And to be honest, I generally agreed with most of their placements. Yeah, I, I yeah. Think, I think for the most part, they were spot on. Um, uh, I think that there's obviously all, you know, there's always small things you can quibble about when it comes to B versus A or C versus B. But I think that S and A tiers were, I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty well spot on. I, I don't, I don't think that there's much room to argue. Yeah. I think maybe, yeah. As we discovered during the, or as I discovered during the Sacramento event, I think, um, I think the other Kelly Gore player kind of agreed there's some clunk in the trunk now when it comes to two finishers and a big problem with it is when it goes to stock at weird times and you have to really crush a whole bunch of your resources to get it paid out that stings and yep. the second getting a hold of the second one in the mid game also it was kilua right is that is it kevin i think so I'm tr i cannot remember for the life of me I like. I want to verify. I just cannot yeah. remember for Again, my entire I, yeah, life. I, but in any case, um, I, I think their assessment of Gura is pretty much correct. Like it's the same deck, but you have these weird clunk points now that are very, that can make some games very, very hard. So, in a big tournament, it's gonna be unlikely that you are able to prevent that from happening to you during the game. So, I, I think ultimately, the the placement of most decks is correct. I feel like it was Kevin. All right, I'm not. I'm gonna stop looking. I'm gonna stop embarrassing myself. It it, it happened. It was it was what it was. Uh, I also think that uh, most of the tier list uh, placements are correct. Um, let's see. Oh, they also made a uh, post kind of like, uh, what is it? Yeah, I, post quint. Post quint. Uh, tier list as well. Yeah, which... which basically finagles the quint decks up to up a tier, pretty much. And like in the Do case they? of in the case of some decks up two tiers, but um, but yeah, yeah, you're not looking at the you're not looking. Where at the, is it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, you're not looking at the right one. There. It's all good. But no worries. Um, but yeah, 
<sighs> I... I mean, it, it doesn't put any of the Quint decks into... Here we go, we got it. Okay, yeah, yeah. It doesn't put any of the Quint decks into S tier, but it does move them into... F some of them firmly into A tier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I do think... What, one one more funny note on it uh, before we move on is that they, they put Revue Starlight C tier. Nobody knows what your cards do, and there's a reason why nobody knows what your cards do. And I know the reason why nobody knows what the Revue Starlight cards do, because at, as mentioned at the beginning of the episode, uh, purely mathematically looking at the statistics, on, on average, there are only 50 real ones out there in the whole, in the whole universe. In an, as a matter of fact, as an exercise, I just tried to list everybody that I figured listened to the podcast, and we got pretty close to 50. So, like, I think I personally know, like, pretty much everybody that's listening to our voices right now. And so, you all technically know what some of the review Starlight cards do, and nobody else. And so, yeah, you know, if you get stock swapped because you don't respect it, don't come crying to me. <laughs> I've said it so many times on the podcast that I'm sure people are tired of hearing it. But there's nothing more dangerous. There's nothing more dangerous than a dark horse deck piloted by a person who's committed. There just isn't. It's the most dangerous thing in a tournament. So Yeah, dude. You, you know, just Ari Ferretta. Stay away from those people. If you man. if you fight Riaz in tournament, man, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's really troubling when you don't know what a deck's capable of, and it's it's hard to keep track of them all. Obviously, yeah, it's, it's hard to keep a track of all the tech. Yeah, the know? tech in particular. Like every time you get slammed by something, some of these old decks will have weird tech, dude. Yeah, or what sets have stock swap, or what sets have Fumio, or what sets have both or what sets have how their finishers work it's like you can kind of eyeball them if they're in the waiting room but or is do they have a level one early play counter like weird shit that you're like i don't want to walk i don't want to step on this man yeah it's just like uh, it's so disgusting sometimes. it's it's actually the most i feel like the the dangerous one is like as an overlord player you like look at them minus at level, power minus power and then like do you if, have minus power fuck i don't know <laughs> Now I gotta play safe! <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Review Starlight has minus power. Lots of sets do, it's just usually not attached to a character of any value. Yeah, JoJo's has it. Attached to a character of value. It's a yeah. drop search! They also have it on that fucking 1-1. One, one. I mean, that's neck 3k. That's yeah. even, that's even Pow! better. Wow! Just like, pull out a shotgun and shoot them. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. know about that mother. <laughs> That's the sound of somebody who got fucking traumatized. Anyway, true, true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, like you gotta be wary of the the random shit, dude. Like I'm, I'm so ready, and I'm gonna out it right now. I'm gonna out myself right now, this exact second. After Quince comes out, and I'm playing Review Starlight. You're gonna catch me with this fucking anti-encore card. What does that mean, Ben? Well, you know how S S Sword Art Online has a Heathcliff and JP that you send it to memory and now both players can't encore? Well, it's a little bit worse than that, obviously. It's old, it's old. But Review Starlight has a card that has on demand, pay one act, both players, or opponent specifically. I could even still use it. Pay one, opponent cannot use encore. Is that a thing? Is that worth it? Did you stand by two fucking one ones in your front row with hand on core? Oh, well that fucking sucks. <laughs> Deleting the two two is even worse somehow. Yeah, dude. Oh, oh, you stood by your two two, expecting value, huh? Well, now you're a seven k. Even be even funnier. This card's like a beater. Like it gets 3k in your turn to 6-5 and using the act gives it another 1k. So by itself, it answers a single 2-2 two, two Nino. You're gonna see how much Ben hates the redheads. But we're gonna find out. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You'll fucking see. You'll fucking find out. You'll fuck around and find out. You're playing fucking Nino into 
A yellow review starlight deck. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll I need to see. I need to. We'll yeah. see, motherfucker. I need to find the. I need to actually watch that tier list video so I can figure out who said what. We don't know what the review starlight cards do. I need that person to play against Ben. Like I need that more than, <laughs> more than anything. I need that. <laughs> no, what I need to happen is that they'll they'll just loot or they'll just like beat me i'll like i have a horrible hand like game they beat me handily then i can just rock up to a regional everybody's like ah that's just a fake set i can just ignore whatever it's doing then i just build up like a full resource pool like stock swap you know like cheat a little bit like fuck around with their cards fuck around with my cards and then i'm just like ah you're dead sucks sucks to be you yeah Cringe, huh? Will we get the Revenge of Review Starlight? We're gonna find out. It's already it already got top eight literally at that Sacramento tournament. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Choice pants, very reasonable deck. I I personally would never try to coin flip my finisher on making sure that there is a soul trigger in the top three cards of my deck. But it's still very reasonable. And it has a lot of ways to cheat so that you can make it happen. So you know what? All good. I like the pants finisher. I do too. It's 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 like a, it's a personal thing, right? Yeah. You know, like me personally, it's a lot of stock, and like you only get the one choice trigger for it. So, you know, y if you want everything you want, you gotta kind of finagle like a good eight stock setup, which might not always happen if you don't block and all that sorts of things. And you yeah. know, pants trigger often makes your deck compression worse by virtue of being pants trigger and so on and so forth. But you know, like it, it's dangerous. We love cheating. It's a great time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, speaking of cheating, uh, let's hop into ambitious deck building. Steve, I have a present for you. Oh boy. My own Revue Starlight deck. <laughs> it's your very own Revue Starlight deck. Steve, would you like to explain some of the card choices that you've made with this list? Ugh. <laughs> no. You, you like the pants finisher and you're playing it, right? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, so. Absolutely. I, I like the pants finisher because the pants finisher seems uber deadly. Um, it also gets humongous, which I'm a, I'm a tremendous fan of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reverse can never backfire you in any universe. I think that, um, I think that multiple small packets is probably the most efficient way to kill someone in Weishwartz. So I, the pants finisher is, uh, pay one on attack. Um, and you can pick a character that gets 4,500 power and gets the following ability whenever their trigger check reveals a soul icon burn one twice is it 45 it is 4500 power man that's where i remember it being yeah it's but yeah it's, it's hugeungus it's big yeah. so um so i kind of like that obviously the best use case for it is play the giraffe spy three see the trigger in the third spot rejoice because it's going to fucking work play no, two I mayas mean, play a third guy what, and what then are you talking about omega did, slam <laughs> did you forget claudine the one that beat, you know, I know you don't know the lore, but Claudine did beat Maya in the movie at the end, you great. know, great times, eternal rivals. And she says she has card text and you put this in your deck. Oh, yeah. She does. She reorders is that is she, she draws and reorders draws and reorders. Yeah, the yeah, top yeah. three even. Yeah. So you either use giraffe or use Claudine to like make sure it's going to work. Stack them all in one dude, preferably Claudine, and then absolutely go ham and blow them away. So that's the strat. Is it going to work? I don't know. Um, part maybe. This guy has six standbys in the deck leading up to this part. So. Yes. So I decided that uh, one way that I might be able to scam the crap out of somebody is by running standby and forcing some obnoxious units onto the board in the mid game. So we have some of the generic 2-2 two, two, 10Ks with hand on core. We have the 3-2 uh, early play package for the Mahiru, which is the um, damage scry, and then uh, gets to stand and, and gives the whole row plus one souls. So her her standby is not really a standby. It's like a standby bonus. Standby plus. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of cool. My biggest problem with this deck, and it will probably stay a persistent problem because it's not a good way to address it after looking at the card base. Um... They don't have a real back row support that I'd want to stand by at any point. Like, it, 
it just it, there's just not one what i want is either a level two support that does something or a level three support that has power and something and they have neither of those so the best we're gonna do i mean do... if you just run the set one brainstormer <laughs> and then the set three red yeah, level three support you could have tap discord salvage right so we're not gonna do any of that. What we're gonna do <laughs> is we're just gonna put this other two one on the board and hope for the best. Yeah, so, we're gonna cheat. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna try and manipulate our opponent's deck because I think that this finisher gets magnified by a hundred times if you have every piece of it working in concert. The ideal setup, in my opinion, is this support, two Mayas, the Claudine, and the resources to pull it off from a hand perspective. I think you need what? Two two more cards in hand plus climax? So yeah, not, not yeah. that not like super... Maya doesn't need a ditch. It's no, just Claudine, it's just one, right? And... and Claudine gets a card into your hand, right? And so it's not a very not a very difficult setup from a hand perspective. You do need some stock, or you need to trigger some standbys. But the upside is we have a whole whole bunch of cards that scry the top of the deck, or look at the top of the deck and reorder them, or choose triggers, or something. So we I stack the rest of the deck with a million mechanics to do all that stuff. So I have the Maya Recruiter, I have the Giraffe, I have the Search Brainstorm that looks at the top at the start of the main phase, climax, climax phase, phase, climax phase. Um, I have the uh, one O Maya that chooses triggers. No, or no it's on placement, play. check two and reorder. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we have a lot of ways to see what the turn's going to look like in advance, which is good because this is a super ambitious deck build um so we'll see uh could blow up in my face could be very fun to play i don't know which but <laughs> i know which one i know which one is leading in my mind but maybe i'll be pleasantly surprised uh, i have attempted this idea before i got and i and i think i did bring it up on the podcast i did get omega traumatized by a similar build uh like the first couple times i faced review starlight so uh, I think it was it was made, me too. Yeah, yeah, it was you playing Hughes deck, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just basically like standby pants. Standby instead. pants, yeah, yeah, instead of standby standby pants. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Fine. Yeah, but yeah, in yeah, any yeah. case, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try. It. He's gonna give it a shot. Uh, second on the ambitious deck building queue, as it is, Avatar eight by, uh, eight bar, eight bar. I don't know why it said eight by. You I knew. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that deck is there. <laughs> My worry with Avatar 8 bar, and after looking at the set, I'm even more worried, is that we're going to have to get really ambitious. We're going to have to get extremely ambitious. Because I don't think you can build this thing vanilla and have it come out right. Right. Like, you need all four colors. 8 bar? Yeah. And you need... Wait, why? Because we need waterbending A. Okay, that's... Oh. Oh, okay. The deck... Here's the thing about Avatar, and there's no All escaping right. it. It doesn't matter how you configure the climaxes. If you do not have a plausible way to proc Waterbending Aang, your deck is not going to have enough deck speed. That's it. Is that's there not... Is there no on Death Akatsuki? Ah. Ah. Okay. So... All right. We're gonna try some wild shit i think okay yeah i had an idea in mind and then and then you brought up waterman and now see i think you could build I'm this sadder. you can build yeah. this with 30 green cards and, yeah yeah and yeah. like it would be fine sure yeah but i think that if you build it that way you're either gonna have to brainstorm every single turn sure sure oh which takes away from like paying for the counter or, to like do and, the thing and the other yeah. problem is that like you're just gonna have these very weird game states if you trigger too much like you don't have a bar support that's you have an okay one there's the um, level zero one yeah yeah it's on act um you can on act power and then you can pitch a bar to is it clock swap draw something i think it was top two is it um like it's some kind of it's a fine it's a fine discard. card yeah. it's not great it's fine but i think ultimately if you don't get a little ambitious with it then it's gonna feel really whatever okay, I don't yeah know. yeah we'll get we'll get a little bit ambitious with it we'll get a little ambitious with it uh okay let's i, I would I, okay we're gonna do something fun i'm gonna look at the timer 
Okay, we are now f approximately 40 minutes into the podcast. So, uh, congratulations! Woo! If you, if you listened up to this point and you're able to leave a comment below and we'll know you're a real one or you could, or you could even just DM me because I'll, I'll know because the, the analytics say that if you are still listening to this podcast right now, there's only approximately 40 of you that have gotten to this point and you're a real one. On which platform? Uh, this is spread across both platforms. So YouTube on average has about a hundred people, quote unquote, views. Right. But there is only at this point, approximately 20% still, a 20 to 30% still listening to the podcast. Got it. And on Spotify, approximately 40 average like total listens with more average like listeners by the end. So approximately like 15 to 20 of those listeners are still with us right now. And congratulations, you know, thank you so much for actually listening to us and not just bullshitting and being like, yeah, we definitely know what you talked about on the podcast that, you know, we listened to the whole thing 100%. You did. You probably will at this point because you've already invested 40 minutes of your own time. You know, you're driving a truck. You're driving for your job somewhere. You're driving to an extremely far away, quote unquote, locals, you know, all sorts of different reasons. And you, you're still listening. Shout out to you. Yep. The real ones. We love them. We love the real ones. If you, <laughs> if you click on that YouTube video for five seconds and then click off, we still love you. Just less. <laughs> like, you know how your parents have a favorite sibling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Like, it's we, like, we definitely it's like, love all of you. We love all of you. Just some of you are more than others. That's yeah. just, you know, I mean, it's natural. I mean, some of you clicked away like 40 minutes ago. You yeah. know, like... It happens. It happens. You know, it's okay. Maybe you get busy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you decided you pulled up an hour plus long video and you got busy five seconds in. That's okay. It's a thing that happens sometimes. It's a thing that happens sometimes. And that's okay. But. And in fact, you can't even hear me apologizing to you. So I feel no remorse. Yeah. <laughs> but for the real ones, we love you. We love you. And, and, and we love the, you the most. And for the real ones as well, you know. A reasonable thing for me to do at the Sacramento Regional would be to bring out slime, you know, go hard in the paint. Yeah. And just send it. You should absolutely do that. I should do that. Yeah, that would be a reasonable thing to do. The way you couch that makes me think you're not going <laughs> to do it. No, yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely do that. But... <laughs> <laughs> the way he's fucking looking at me. What do you mean you're definitely gonna do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but in an ambitious deck building segment, you know, just to explore an ambitious game plan instead. Okay. Right? Um, because people, like, people, some people like to message me asking for review thoughts. And they'll they know oh. you're him. <laughs> <laughs> they know. <laughs> some people like to message me asking me for review thoughts. And, you know, um, it's funny that I max rarity this entire fucking list yep. for like countless dollars and yeah. just absolutely like thousands of dollars. Just absolutely giga sent my wallet into the shadow realm. Yep. And I don't think that's anywhere near the, the best review list to play right now in the current meta. Because, Why? Because as I've mentioned before, the uh the one meta matchup that you hated the most as the door the pants door player was slime we still have that <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> so like let's... you're not the only person who saw the ban list was like fuck well no actually well I, I did say that just later yeah the, the the first reaction we have on tape yeah because uh... <laughs> you knew you knew that you're the 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 dirty secret is that you can always reach into the back pocket and and bring pull out, slime. out old reliable yeah 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 easy as you like free free yeah. but you know if I if I was a little more ambitious and I wanted to make the best possible review list yeah. for, for for the, the current meta. meta yeah I I I have a funny idea so okay. uh, I posed this question to you before and I'll pose it again to you now live for the sake of the audience. What might sound a little better to you as like a straight up finishing line, right? 
two uh, like two yeah sorry two three yeah two three two three two three essentially like a moraine line yeah or one two one two then three 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 with another potential for another burn line yeah i mean obviously if you can manage like if i consistently get the second line what so do we think? so seven packets instead of six uh-huh which is already better sure and yeah. the only downside is all the small packets happen at once that's true so but that's kind of okay because and they're small like differently sized differently packets. sized small packets so which, it kind of like reaches you in like yes. if you're at like two five or three zero it like reaches you in for like the last three vanilla swings to kill you yeah i prefer the interspersed packets of choice but i think that more packets always trumps fewer packets that's just that's just common sense and um and if you can do it consistently, then, then yeah. I mean, then yeah, we're there. Okay. That's yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's yeah, possible okay. to get an eighth packet. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. True. Sometimes. It is. It is. That's so, also at the start, though. No. That's oh. also interstitial. Yeah. The eighth burn one. Yeah, that would be interstitial for this for this theoretical line, which we will now explore. So, uh, I know for a fact that nobody else is fucking looking at this combo because I just picked up all the SRs and Climax combo SR or, like SCCs for it for like two dollars a piece. Uh, it's the fucking choice finisher from the fin from the movie set. It's selfish art, selfish highway, Karuko Hanayagi. And this is the text on the card. On play, check three, add any. On climax phase, pay two, discard two. Burn one, then burn two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the only downside to this thing is it's expensive. Um, it, it costs a lot of resources, but uh, Kaoruko res refunds a card on play. Yeah. Which is useful because yep. pitching two would be literally impossible any other way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so I can agree. So it's really kind of not pitch two. It's like pitch one. But yeah. Uh, still requires a lot of cards in hand, requires a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, you'd be surprised how cheap Pay2 Digital on Climax Phase is. Uh, <laughs> so, the current list that I have built for the current meta is 8 choice Review Starlight. Um, and to be fair, I think that Choice Pants, which is something that has taught before and can top again and has been piloted before, completely reasonable as well. Uh, I hate the color red. Here's why. Red fucking sucks. If Choice you're not... pants Maya? Yeah. You still need red. Why do you need red? You need Claudine. And you need the cheat card. Those are great red cards. Those are the only great red cards. I really discovered when I was building this how bad red is. And red like, fucking is shit. I was happy to run le like plenty of red threes so that I could level one of them. But like realistically, the red zero lineup in Revue Starlight is horrible. Like, there's just not The worst part about building Revue Starlight is all the good green cards and how nothing else beyond zero is good that's green. Now hear me out. <laughs> like, literally every good green card is Now zero. hear me out. <laughs> In this list, I can play green. Oh, ho! <laughs> you have to play green. You don't have any fucking choice. Like, you got the to only play climax the Ricky. swapper is green. <laughs> yeah, the only climax swapper is green. The Ricky, Ricky is green. green. And now, what else do we have? Beat the fucking Cart Titan. Yeah, Cart Titan green, and they have a 2113k that's on uh, also green. Yeah, and yeah. And it refunds money whenever it beats something. Yeah, it beats a level two or higher. You get one stock back. Yeah, that's kind of reasonable for, for the Yeah, profile. you have a Brainstormer that gives 500 to level one and hires in front of it. And then you play a Climax, and now you're a 14-5? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I think it's good. It has to reverse a two or higher. Yeah. So that's good against Miron. Yeah. You force Miron to counter, or you call them a bitch. Yeah, they won't, and, they won't counter. Right, like, you're going to spend your six soul counter on this guy? No, they're yeah. going to no, let that fucking Miron die. <laughs> yeah, it's only one. They'll be like, yeah, I'll, I'll let one Miron die. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. It's, all, it's all good. So, bro, if you get cart tightened, though, that's rough. It shouldn't happen, but if it does, it's, it's terrible. Dude, cart titan is fucking hilarious. 
like it shouldn't happen against slime they should have shuna down not but. even slime just like in other random it's very like, good in other badges. matches for sure. it's like very very funny card. it's gonna be extremely good against ayakashi it's gonna be good against uh, uh or his the standby variant yes yeah yeah the Sa pants standby, variant standby like ayakashi. yeah pants variant you can still kill something which is funny but yeah right um it's also very good against um Rio and yeah, yeah, like yeah. other boards that present themselves at level like at level two big like level three boards. Yeah. So yeah, we love the card titan. We love card titan. So we get green. We get green tech, uh, which is great time. We have blue, obviously, uh, because we have our brains. Oh yeah, the helmet's green too. Fuck this and set, the by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the helmet that freezes is green. Yeah. I yeah. have to include like seven green cards in my in my pants standby standby list yeah they're just dead on sight <laughs> yeah. because they're they you can't play without them they're fucking too good yeah <laughs> here's yeah. your ricky congratulations it's green yeah okay I'll just go. that's my favorite stage girl right there mayu suzaki yeah. yeah 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 all right yeah okay yeah I picked the worst build for the, for the meta, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you can get frozen, you can get anti early, you can get fucking. It's more like this my hero early play is just gonna get killed every turn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just have my hand to hand on court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll just block. Yeah, copium. Maybe I'll just block. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and so here's the actual like bare minimum cost of Kawako. Eight stock when you enter the finishing turn. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot and three cards in your hand that's not a lot because you draw and then you clock you have two more cards and okay and that would assume to be fair like a back row that you can swing with right like this is like pure bare minimum like scuff game if you have two karukos and a card the climax it, presumably it, presumably the climax <laughs> but you could also draw into it yeah. with, with you the, know with its clock draw and then check six more cards yeah you could do double karako and three swings uh self-setting combos in my opinion are There's never no board requirements are never overrated and no. any way a combo can help set itself up is always good no board requirement no like random other requirement and all of the packets that are not villain and illa swings dodge any sort of counterplay whatsoever yeah uh, another thing about door finisher, you can get memory countered if you do like the three two into the two one setup, which you frequently might be stuck doing because you know your game is going a little bit weird. And the easiest, most consistent way to set it up is with the three two Hikari into the two one Karen. And what set has memory counter? And even though they might not play it, they definitely can and have in the past. There's a million sets that that, that fits that that bill, like all of them. <laughs> That's true. But the biggest one at the top of mind. Slime. Yeah. If they, they guaranteed have the body for it. They're almost certainly running it. They can't get three slayered out of it. Cause like other sets, you might like be able to like three slayer power your way through it. Slime is punching two 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 ones. Congratulations on losing Karen. Sick. Or siding with Karen. Even worse somehow. Unless you're able to like giraffe for the, the trigger for one. Which is definitely great. <laughs> really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, never mind all that. We get all of our packets in the climax phase. <laughs> so, a, a lot of counterplay removed. Also, more tech. We have a bouncer. It's yellow. It's a 1 0. Pay one, ditch one. Bouncer fucking guy. Great time. That's times. the same profile that um, they put in the SAO light novel Annie set. Yeah, but you have to ditch a character. Yeah. I get to ditch a anything, That's including a climax. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Sick. yeah, I think that profile is very good. Yeah. And also, we have Cart Titan. So, we have, like, a lot of just, like, on-demand and on, like, pseudo-on-demand removal. Yeah, I think that that's a big part of, like, understanding and working with the meta is, is like, figuring out ways to that your set can manage the, the nature of the meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually deeply funny that so far in trying out this idea... Um, uh, I've exclusively used the bounce card even in like the few matches against Shauna. They had bad games and did not field anti burn. And then the only other times I have used the bounce card was into Hollow Live, 
when I look at them and they look at me with a five card hand and I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's only two. There's only two sets walking around with uh, tap counter, if I recall correctly. It's and, Overlord and Hollow Eye, yeah, baby. Yeah, and uh, yeah, shutting that down is is never a bad bad thing to do. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and it turns out eight choice. This is a sick fucking trigger lineup when you need eight stock at the end of the game. And when you have a card that goes into stock, when your opponent plays a climax, and you have double trigger to pay out your choices and even try to dig for more choices, we can get to eight stock pretty pretty nifty. Yeah, I don't think stock is the main concern. It's if the game kind of drags out, it can be ugly in the mid game. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's hand. Yeah, that hand. can be the issue. Yeah, and so but you don't need that much of it, so it's probably fine. Yeah, you know, as long as the game doesn't like take a too rapid of a pace i think it's okay it's honestly funny how many times i i in a few games as well by now where like i'll block at two but they're at like three two and so i'm like all right where are all my fucking rickies i'm just like doing them like remembering my stock and you know doing the math i've got one in my hand i'm like okay 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 Clock, Ricky, Ricky, get the audio at the God's key, mill, brainstorm, mill, re refresh penalty, go to three, do single cow reco, they die in climax phase anyway. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> also, real stock swap is one hell of a drug. Yeah, I fucking I'm tired love. of stock swap already. I fucking love real stock swap. You think you could have eight clean stock against me? No, you need to stock swap me first. And if you don't do that, then I'm going to stock swap you for joy. And that shit's going to fucking hurt. <laughs> I think twice, uh, in not not this week, obviously, because I haven't been playing, but tw twice last week, I got stock swapped in the mid game by a slime player where they were just like, oh, I'm about to do my second mirror on turn after blocking you three times. Cool. I guess I'll just stock swap because why not yeah yeah pay down my stock get and yeah like, you get fucked fuck are you yeah. yeah great times yeah, i was like now this... mine is at level three i was like this shit's got but... this shit's gotta go like, <laughs> like yeah please mine's don't at level ever three. print please don't it's ever balanced. print this Ish. on zero again please please i'm begging you like stock swap at zero is so disgusting yeah i mean it's yeah mine's technically balanced it's at level three i'm fine with level three ones it is yeah, what it is it is what it is but man, um, yeah, dude, you know, all, all approximately 50 of you right now listening to this, you, you know, that review has real stock swap, but man, can I say that not everybody else at the regional knows that shit statistically it's impossible. There's like 200 people there. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, good luck uh, getting that figured out. How you uh, how you want to approach the meta with that set? I would just play slime. Yeah, yeah. But and I think that's the reasonable thing to do. I, you know, we'll if I was see. A, yeah, if we'll, I was a reasonable individual, you know, if I was spiking it up real correctly. Yeah. You know, just you know, I would just play slime. Yeah. As many of you might, uh, if you want to win, win your local shop challenge. Cause yeah, buy cards, man. We love buy cards. I mean, statistically, you're reducing the amount of randomness in the tournament. That's just that's always a good thing to do. That's always a good thing to do. So now in the spike corner, we kind of you kind of broke down your entire Sacramento tournament earlier. I did. So it's gonna be the shortest spike corner of all time. Let's talk about what to play at your local shop challenge. Uh yeah. So the upside to playing in a local shop challenge is that you should know most of your opponents rather intimately, and so you can you can. You can adjust the dial, right? Tune in on and get some local meta hate. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it's deadly funny. Like, a bunch of Riaz's locals, like, specifically play, like, bombs and random, like, clock bombs and things to fucker, like, the, the drop surge going to memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. If you got a weak spot and you beat everybody up, you're going to start seeing some local ass hate. Yeah, and yeah. So. This is like the, they, like the Overlord players fucking running a clock bomb at zero. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah. So get your local hate in. It's tough. Now's to, the time. Yeah, honestly. It's tough to tell people exactly what to play at shop challenges. You're going to have to, you're going to have to look around around you. See what, 
see what your what your boys are playing, what your girls are playing, and uh, just pick the hate that is going to hate them the most, and yeah. then uh, do that. So, yeah, that's my best advice for you: is if you really want to like grasp a hold of this shop challenge thing and dominate it and then, just get some free buys then find find out who, what you're not good against and insert some hate that will stop it you because... know like you know there is you know it's not that it's not that like you know slime is good for a reason for sure but if you you know into your matchup a little bit into some other decks but can really like answer a Muron board or like really annoy the piss out of slime in one way or another you know i mean i mean if you think your local's gonna have it man then yeah don't... i mean like it's it, it's like you know like like even in, in uh, as an example in kelly like chairman like simu he was like super rating uh the milam slime variant right which makes sense they got a fuck. They got a bunch of fucking Hendrickson players over there. Yeah. You field me them, and then they they're like, I got a fucking Rico for my fucking Elizabeths again. Yeah. <laughs> disrupting any back row combos with Milam is a is a high tier strategy if you believe your opponents are playing Overlord, SDS, whatever, like uh, Chainsaw Man, like tons of like different back Dude, row combos. Dude, if your combos. opponent likes Corone at home, like Reamer Slime, like. You know they're playing three rules, and you're like, "Yep, no, nope. pow!" Or the bar, <laughs> or the pants combo, the zero pants combo. Yeah, nope. yeah. See you Bang. later. <laughs> you know, <laughs> forcing your opponent to sculpt more is is never overrated. And the Milan board, especially with their bonder, gets humongous. It's crazy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's like eight five. Holy shit. Yeah, Damn. dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be scared. Be scared. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually. That was that was a point I forgot to mention. In ambitious is that the that level one choice combo for Revue, uh with a full field, presumably including the brainstorm, is an eight five with combo. That's huge. And it has a soul trigger on it. Yeah, because of course it does. I've, it was part of that window where they were like, we should print ones with soul triggers on them. Now, I, <laughs> as long as they're not zeros, honestly, I, I'm kind of made peace with it at this point. But dude, it's so. It's actually so good for that kind of deck too, because you're just like, play the one combo, lose the one combo, trigger choice. Wow, get paid. Wow, yeah. yeah. And like early game, you're just like, oh hey, that's another soul trigger. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah, for sure. Great times. So, yeah, I think that there's a lot of ways to approach the meta. But yeah. But in a shop challenge setting where it's going to be like between 8 and 16 people, just look at the people who you think are going to be a problem for you and make your decision based on that. Yeah, I don't fucking know your shop challenge. This is actually like a fake premise of, of like a question in a yeah, sense. Yeah, for sure. Because we can't answer it. I don't know. But we can tell you that if you aren't having a good time against a specific matchup and you know it's going to be there, that may not be a good idea. Maybe it's time to change it up a little bit. Yeah. Or you could just send it and remember that you don't need to have a buy card to win a regional. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. I lost the regional, like, handily that I used my buy card at last year. And I did not use a buy card in any regional last year. Yeah. So it happens. Happens. But if you in can fact, get... I won the regional that I didn't use a buy card at. Yeah. But if you can get one, <laughs> statistically, you're improving your odds by getting one. So if you can, get one. Might as and well. If you gotta travel a little bit, and eh, then that's probably okay too. Might as well get your, you know, competitive practice in. Yeah. And if you're traveling a little bit, I, odds are you're you're listening to us right now. So yeah, you know, good luck on that shop challenge, buddy. <laughs> good luck. You got it. I believe in you. Steve, do you believe in them? Absolutely. All right, Steve believes in you the too. The real ones, we believe in them. We. <laughs> Yeah, the real ones, we believe in you. Go win your shop challenge. I'm going to be honest with you. I need I need to know how many real ones actually do well this season. I need to, <laughs> I just want to I just want the flex so bad. Dude. <laughs>
<laughs> Only good players listen to the refresh Bro, point. if you get invited to Worlds and you listen to the refresh point, I got you, man. I'm going to get you something. That way, <laughs> we're all in Japan together. Oh. We can take like a group photo with our flex. Like, I'm going to buy you a chain or something to go around your neck. It's got the refresh point logo. Like, we're going to flex. <laughs> <laughs> show these kids what's up. Show them what at, for. If you want to get good at this game. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, we have some opinions on this podcast. They we may, do. Or, they may or may not be good, but the real ones—they do correlate with success. That's what we're hoping to prove. And, so. and the real ones are good enough to be able to parse their own opinions and not just listen to us and take what we say at our word. Hopefully, they at least take some of what we say at our word. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I, I like to think that the person, the kind of person that would listen all the way through this podcast, would be able to critically think and evaluate for themselves the information that we're giving and be able to not only contest with us, but also be able to accept in a way that's useful to them the information that we're putting out. And if not, then you need to tell us that we suck and we'll that's true. <laughs> we'll, we'll get better. We'll get Our better. bad skill issue. <laughs> what can I say except skill issue? <laughs> Go listen to that. I'm by not the way. listening to that. I'm you, not you have to. No, I can't. It's cringe. It's, it's so, it's so cringe. funny, dude. <laughs> it's so good. They they got they got they got the the audio tracks to layer yeah, for yeah. like the group voice Great. near the end for yeah. the echoes. Terrific. So it's it's really it's really funny, dude. God damn it, Carmen. God damn it. <laughs> uh, man. All right, but yeah. Our next, you, the, by the time you're listening to this, um, our next episode will be recorded, like right before, two weeks yeah. before Sacramento. After which we will be having pretty much like a three week break, because well, that episode will release the week before Sacramento, and then we will be playing three shop tournament or shop challenges in a row. Then I will go to Sacramento. And then we'll come back and record the refresh point. Yeah. Uh, so look forward to a special guest for the next episode. Since it's our last episode before competitive season truly gets underway, I think we need a guest. Okay, yeah. I think we need to bring in the second best player in Weishwartz. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So tune in for that. But that is our show for today so tune in next time after your next tech out and don't you forget to take the refresh point <laughs>